first of all, I want to say that there are the two most important men to come out of Oklahoma, Will Rogers and Johnny Allen. <laughs> and wait, wait, wait. We're I have a lot more to say, Johnny. Um, and my fellow Oklahoman, actually. He was born in Oklahoma in 1929. We know what was happening then. It was the Dust Bowl. So in some ways, he came into the crucible of an ecological disaster. And I think he understood on many levels what his life work was going to be about. He is a systems ecologist, an engineer, metallurgist, adventurer, and writer and poet. He's best known as the inventor and director of the research at Biosphere 2, the world's largest laboratory of global ecology, and was the founder of Synergia Ranch, where we sit today. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Biosphere 2 set a number of world records in closed life systems at work. Alan, was also, Alan also conceived and co-founded nine other projects around the world, pioneering in sustainable co-evolutionary development. He began the first manned biosphere test module experiment in 1988, residing in the almost fully recyclable closed ecological system environment for three days and setting a world record at the time. Allen was responsible for the science and engineering that created the materially closed life system, uh, as well as the development of spin-off technologies. And he is currently the chairman of uh, Global Ecotechniques Corporation. Please, for more information, go see that on the web. Um, and let's see, so many things about Johnny. He's truly a Renaissance man. In the early 60s, um, he was traveling as an expeditionary studying ecology, particularly the ecology of early civilizations in Nigeria, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Turkey, India, Tibet. Um, all that coming from studying, after studying, uh, getting a Harvard MBA with di high distinction from the Harvard Business School, and um, also graduated from the Colorado School of Mines. So you can see this man is, is quite diverse in his thinking, but more than anything else, he's the biggest heart that I know. So uh, take pleasure in Johnny Allen. Harmony of the biosphere, ethnosphere, and noosphere that is needed to transform technospheres' continuous destructions into continuous creations. These, quote, spheres actually are complex, complex, dynamically changing shapes, but they can be visualized as existential, experiential layers around planet Earth. Physical measurements, of course, show Earth to be an oblate spheroid surface roughened with ocean deeps, continental plates, ice caps, volcanic eruptions, and lava flows, and wars. Earth's oceans respond to moon with tides, its atmosphere to expansions and contractions caused by sun, to weather, gigantic weather, such as ice ages and dry ages, meteor impacts, and rearranging of continents. In short, spheres are ingenious metaphors inspiring platonic-type theories and magical religious rites, but taken literally, dangerously, oversimplify reality. Nonetheless, biosphere remains a useful metaphor for life within Earth's geosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, and today, technosphere. Noosphere received its name from Vernadsky, Russian geochemist who first used biosphere to name the total system of life here on Earth. Nous, Greek for thought intelligence, became noosphere when the collective human intelligence began operating beyond ethnosphere's cultural totems taboos and technosphere's Panama and Suez canals planetary air transport, spaceships, radio, television, world market, and the net. Technospheric dynamics beyond the will of humans, as Marx first saw, now exploit ethnosphere's conflicting totems and taboos. Its corporate owners and military guardians intensively shove their shit and shinola throughout biosphere. Dramatically, drastically load lithosphere, atmosphere, and hydrosphere with millions of new chemicals never reported to the public. 
Even the number is unknown to the emitters that emit them. And millions of tons, billions and trillions of tons displacement of rock, oil, and minerals. In short, humanity has become a geologic force. As Bernatsky shorthanded in 1920, Industrial Revolution's transformation generated that geological force, surpassing ice ages and desert ages in diminishing Earth's surface potentialities for life. Noospherians endeavor to integrate Earth's histories, sciences, arts, politics, enterprises, and adventures in their individual lives and in creative groups to understand realities, to synergize each other with the purpose of increasing their noose, their intelligence. Bo's biosphere signifies the total four billion year old system of Earth life, from first non-nucleated cells to today's six kingdoms, counting humans as one. Some see a seventh revolution, the information industrial revolution, humans spliced to a technologic cocoon from conception to separation. Ethnosphere means all cultures on Earth, all worldviews replicating key meanings, values, and behaviors for two or more generations. Ethnosphere has fallen under technosphere's domination. Jobs have replaced ceremonies as tribal identifiers. Technosphere, all techniques from space travel to farming to medicine to language to government, war, and markets. Technologies drives, analogs to lives, almost exactly. Expansion at all costs, complexity, ability to survive situations from solitary walks to class and national wars, from avant-garde arts to street markets, to world trade, from militaries backed with hydrogen bombs, special forces, and brainwashings, to individuals and tribes defending homelands with jungle craft and transformations of perceptions. Biosphere gets de devastated by no holds barred power and profit driven arm to the teeth technosphere, concentrated on looting, destroying New Guinea's forests, for example, sucking dry American Great Plains groundwater. Ethnosphere ethics ignored or gored by financial capitalism's nihilist speculators astutely evade taxes, laws, and victims. Technosphere, driven by war and speculation, maximizes oligopolies, obscene profits, even from cups of coffee by evading local tax while demanding legal protections. To increase hitherto undreamed of powers, speculators exploit provincial wars, world cities greed, plunder what remains of tribal fishing, hunting, farming. Efforts to harmonize technosphere and ethnosphere with human well-being, cultural diversity, and species-rich biosphere get attacked as daydreams, as coyotes, Don coyotes, tilting windmills. But daydreams differ from nightmares. We can critique, test, and prove daydreams. Inspiring dreams can, if coherent with data, transform the creative visions to birth ideas, which at right time and place, with right ideas, right skills, and right people, transform drastically impoverished civilizations and situations into health and wealth. Which, for example, these vectors did by transforming fascist, imperialistic, war-worshipping Western Europe to a bastion of peace in 1945-48, in rebirthing classical cosmic thought in Ferenczi in one generation in the 14th in saving the redwoods, Yellowstone, hot springs, and other wilderness from commercial devastation in the USA by Theodore Roosevelt and Muir. Harmony easily arises between biospheric aligned bodies, but not between bodies specialized to serve class, corporate, or national interests hostile to wilderness and spontaneity. This harmony embodied here and here and here on occasion by two or three who understand realities can with intelligent action spread to groups on occasion to communities. Of course, brainwashings, epidemics of regional wars, profit maximizing, overpopulation, indoctrinations keep wars and psychoses raging, state power and financial profiteering 
vertiginous. But here in a dome, co-designed with Bucky Fuller and Bill Dempster, I vibe with bodies adaptable to many conditions. Desert, jungle, ocean, world city, farming, high tech. To many cultures, philosophies, and worldviews, I glimpse, and each one here, flowers of a planetary, hardcore, experienced, life enhancing, inevitably emerging culture. I grok wizards assembled here, handy with tools like hoes, shovels, hammers, saws, compasses, machines, computers, networks, conversations, parties, events, movements, cost analyses, eloquent and body and gesture language, technical exactitude, street jargons, wilderness ecstasies, Pregnant silences. I see also a working example of creative, biospheric, ethnospheric, technospheric, noospheric subsystems. A sparkling glint in the eye of reality. This bioregion, this Rios Hills, gives geological setting to that glint. Its magical form survived human caused flash floods and droughts erosions a process begun by Folsom and modern man's ferocious overhunting. On this ranch, one can see that drastic soil erosion begun by 1880s ruthless mining and ranching, halted but not yet restored by hand-carried tons of rocks to make strategic small dams, by giving up cattle and horses, rebuilding soil, growing orchards and gardens. I don't give up hope in the future, I wish I could have more faith in the present, more charity toward the past. I happily see here, embodied in different ratios, in each of us, allegiance to those values. And we need them to challenge this disastrous era. I belong to that school that never prays except by actions, but for once here, I must use words. I pray that humanity, at least its tested cadres and uncorrupted newcomers, work side by side with all fellow life forms to harmonize bodies and techniques, that they stop bowing to super prophets looted from humans and biosphere by oily crusades, bulldozed wildernesses, and body-degenerating foods. <laughs>